These are Greek tortoises, one of the most popular and loved tortoise species across the planet. A famous European tortoise, part of the genus Testudo, along with Hermans, Russians, Egyptians, and Marginateds, Greek tortoises have won the hearts of many throughout time. Also known as popular European garden tortoises, these animals have been a part of herpetoculture and even gardening for decades and decades and decades. They're a wonderful species, and there's all different types throughout their expansive range in Europe and even parts of Asia. But in this video, I'm going to give you a nice, simple introduction to the life, the anatomy, and the behavior behind this incredible European tortoise. Greek tortoise belongs to the species complex Testudo Graeca. Now I'm not going to go nuts with taxonomy on you guys because I don't want you to get bored or confused, but this is a prime example of what a Greek tortoise typically looks like. They're a small to medium sized European and even North African tortoise, and they have typically a domed shell. You're going to see hues of black and yellow or straw coloration or brown and black or even sometimes an olive green coloration. They have a blunter snout. The eyes sit a little bit higher on the head when compared to a Hermans tortoise. And when you look at the plastron, they actually have a movable posterior plastral lobe. But the most famous trait of the Greek tortoise is found on what we consider to be its thighs. On either side of the tail, you'll notice a distinct spur. And that's where the Greek tortoise gets its second name, Mediterranean spur thigh tortoise. And this differs with the species that it is most often confused with, which is the Hermans tortoise, which has a spur on the end of the tail. Greek tortoises do not have that spur on the end of the tail. They have spurs on their thighs. So again, the Mediterranean spur thigh tortoise. Like most turtle and tortoise species, there are of course Greek tortoise subspecies. And let me tell you, it gets insane trying to figure out who is who when it comes to the Greeks. Even someone like me that has studied them my entire life, it still gets confusing. But enough about that. Let's show you some that are pretty easy to tell from each other and you're gonna be pretty floored at the beauty of most of them. But first, let's check out the most common. This is the most famously known Greek tortoise in the world. This is the Ibera Greek tortoise, or as some call it, the Asia Minor tortoise, Testudo Graeca Ibera. Ibera are the largest of the Greek tortoises typically, with some attaining dimensions over 10 inches. That's right, these animals can get to be almost a foot long in some cases. Now, of course, it depends on where they come from. Generally, your Ibera that come from the north are going to be dark colored. Now, this is important when it comes to the Greek tortoise species complex because the darker animals are generally gonna be coming from more northern territories because they need to be darker to absorb the sun quicker and longer. This animal comes from northern Turkey, where some of these animals are literally jet black with not a speck of color on them. They start off more a black and yellow as hatchlings, like a Herman's would, but by the time they get to be to a riper old age of, well, let's say this guy's probably around 50 years old, they can turn solid black. Ibera Greek tortoises are bold. They're able to accept a wide variety of conditions when it comes to temperature and humidity and just the overall climate. They will inhabit the edge of forests, even go into them, grasslands, scrublands, and pretty much everything in between. And they still have some pretty decent strongholds in areas like Turkey where they're found, where they can just be seen walking around in the streets when people are just going about their day. I love these tortoises. They have big, powerful heads and limbs, and there's a lot of personality with them too. I've been working with them most of my life and I have to say, it's hard to beat their personality. Let's move on to another one. This beautiful animal comes from Libya, and in herpetoculture, we refer to this as the Libyan Greek tortoise, Testudo Graeca serenaica. This animal comes in a variety of coloration, but it's known for its Dalmatian spotting. And this animal is showing some pretty exquisite spots that, well, if you ask me, it kind of looks like a Dalmatian dogwood. They have a beautiful yellow to straw color carapace that is typically a little bit more elongate than when compared to the Ibra that's really bulbous and round, and some of them will have a higher yellow content like this, while others can be pretty dark. Now this animal comes from way more arid environments. 
Libya, right? They're found along the coast, but they're also found more inland areas that have some higher elevation, which is why those animals may have heavier spotting and more dark pigment to them. But this animal right here in my hands is really a wonderfully classic example of this tortoise. This tortoise is not as common in the hobby as its Ibra cousin is, but like the Ibra, there are some pretty awesome strongholds of them in nature, where there are literally thousands of these tortoises inhabiting desert-like areas with low-lying shrubbery. But just because this animal is a desert tortoise does not actually make it an animal that would thrive only in a desert environment. What I mean by that is tortoises like this are colored to adapt to that environment. Now she needs to be lighter colored because if she was really dark, she would burn up instantly. And she's gonna be looking for a precious microclimate that offers her some humidity because no matter what species of tortoise we're dealing with, they all need to have adequate hydration in their environments and be able to drink water and absorb it around them. So Libyan tortoises like this one right here. Although they are adapted to a desert-like climate and environment, they are going to seek out areas underneath shrubbery and other plant life and along the coasts where they can get humidity and hydration. Even if it's minimal, they will force themselves into it so that from day one they can grow smoothly. Because remember, we've told you in many of our tortoise rearing videos that from an early age, no matter what species it is, they need to have a microclimate that offers them hydration and humidity so that shell can grow strongly and properly and not be overly pyramided or anything. So there you go. That is your Libyan Greek tortoise, one of my ultimate favorites of any tortoise species out there, and especially the Greek tortoise family. This Greek tortoise might look a little familiar to you as well. This is what so many people refer to as the golden Greek tortoise, Testudo Graeca terrestris. This animal has the most expansive range out of any Greek tortoise in the world, where they're found in several different countries, and they're also found in several different types of habitat. And not unlike the Ibra or the Libyan tortoise, their color will vary depending on where they're found. So if they're found in arid areas, they're gonna be lighter colored, which is where that golden term comes from. And of course, of course, the tortoises in areas where it's not as arid are going to be darker. But that's why the name of this tortoise really doesn't hold much water. Now I am holding an example that is primarily yellow or golden or a little bit olive colored, but there are some that are jet black just like the Ibra and there are some that can even resemble a Libyan a little bit because it can have some black blotching or spotting. Nonetheless, they are a very distinct subspecies genetically and anatomically speaking, but the name golden really isn't what these tortoises should be called. Mesopotamian tortoise is much more suitable for them because your goldens are not always going to be golden. And let's face it, they're not actually golden. They're a lemon yellow, a pale yellow, an olive green yellow. Some of them are even orange. And as I've already said, some of them can be covered in black pigment. These tortoises are sensitive. And unfortunately, they are still collected in droves for the pet trade worldwide. And unfortunately, many of them don't survive their first year because they have a hard time adapting to other environments. This little guy right here happens to be captive bred. So he's in the clear. He's several years of age at this point, and he really is a nice prime example of what Testudo Graeca terrestris is. So there's your golden Greek tortoise. So a fun fact about Greek tortoises, really none of them, with the exception of a couple populations of Ibra, are even found in Greece. So that's not where the Greek tortoise got its name. It got the name Greek tortoise because of the Greek mosaic-like pattern of the carapace. Haha. -ha. The next tortoise I show you though is going to throw you for a loop because it doesn't really look that much like the other Greek tortoises. And this one comes from Africa. This little guy right here is the Moroccan tortoise, also known as the Moroccan Greek tortoise, Testudo Graeca maracensis. This animal is confusing because it might resemble a different tortoise that belongs to the Testudo family that I've shown you guys before. Doesn't it look like a marginated tortoise? Look at those flared out marginal scoots, see that? Well, that's because the marginated tortoise is not the only tortoise species that's allowed to have that. The Moroccan tortoise is very, very well known for that, and it's very pronounced in males, as you can see right here. These tortoises also come from arid environments, but again, common denominator here, depending on where they are in their geographic locations will determine how much light pigment they have or how much dark pigment they have. Nonetheless, this animal is known for a flatter, more elongated carapace with those beautiful flared marginal scoots, and they're gonna 
gonna have some spotting or even rays on each carapace scoot that might look like rays of sunshine to you, only they're colored black. These animals are not very well known in herpetoculture, and in fact, they were only discovered by science in recent years. These tortoises also resemble other North African tortoise species, but I promised you I wouldn't go nuts. But the Moroccan tortoise is really a very different example of a Greek tortoise, and to boot, their hatchlings are one uniform color of brown or tan, whereas all other baby Greek tortoises hatch out with at least a central spot on each scoot. So right from birth, this tortoise really differs heavily from all the other tortoises. It is still in fact a subspecies of Greek tortoise, it is not a full species, and that stuff can really get carried away, but the Moroccan really is unique. And just when you think you've got Greek tortoises figured out, this animal just might confuse you. But remember, it does have a movable posterior plastral lobe with that little hinge there that allows the body to expand. And it also, of course, is going to have those thigh spurs on each side of the tail. It is, in fact, a Greek tortoise. Regardless of where they occur in nature, Greek tortoises are sun dwellers, sun lovers, and they absolutely need it to stay healthy. And throughout their wild range, they occur on well-drained ground. They like scrubland, rocky areas, the edges of forests, meadows, fields, and they will even come into farmer's fields to help themselves to things like pumpkins or other produce that a farmer may be growing. In fact, in some areas, they're considered to be pests. Here in southern New Jersey, we make sure all our pens are in full sunlight, are south-facing, and are on well-drained ground. We're lucky enough to have a sandy, soily substrate, so it does drain very well, and Greek tortoises of all kinds have done wonderful here for a long time now. They are animals that learn to accept you as their food source. So they quickly become bold and they will run up to you and even ram you for food. And some might even become territorial. So they're really a fun animal to work with, but they are absolutely sensitive to things like climate. So if you live in an area where it's not sunny or you don't have well-drained ground, don't even attempt to house these tortoises outdoors. And really outdoors is where they should be because nothing replaces the sunlight and the elements. When these animals are in appropriate areas, rainfall, even sometimes heavy, is good for them because like all reptiles, they do appreciate humidity to an extent and they will come out in the rain and drink from puddles and really just kind of soak it all up. No pun intended. Greek tortoises need low-lying shrubbery. They don't need a heavy canopy because again, the sun is important. So we plant things like spirea, grasses, knockout roses, other types of roses, hibiscus, rose of Sharon, and plants like that that are low-lying to the ground where the animals can create scrapes or burrows underneath and really just use them as temporary shelters so that they can easily come out into a sunny area. We also provide them with cold frames or greenhouses so that they can thermoregulate. Now when it comes to hibernation, that completely depends on the type of Greek tortoise. And not to get too carried away, but I will give you two examples. The Ibera Greek, that is going to be your most cold tolerant tortoise overall when it comes to Greeks and even overall with other tortoise species to be frank. They really can handle the cold and they can handle very prolonged periods. In fact, the tortoises right here never spend a day indoors no matter what and no matter what's going on outside depending on the time of year. But when it comes to subspecies like the Libyans, those animals absolutely have to be brought inside for the winter similar to more exotic species like our redfoot tortoises and giant tortoises would have to. So unfortunately when it comes to keeping Greek tortoises it's not a blanket. You can't just throw a blanket down and encompass all the different subspecies with one way of care. You have to really really understand what you're going up against when it comes to the specific type of Greek tortoise. And I'm gonna leave in the description of this video a link to a very detailed care guide I wrote that goes over every single type out there. And speaking of which, we only covered four different types of Greek tortoises in this video to give you guys a little bit of an introduction. There's a lot more to it, and I want to know. Drop your ideas in the comments for a big, lengthy Greek tortoise video. What do you guys want to see? What do you want to hear when it comes to them and their amazing species complex?